For the second time this month, SpaceX has just stacked its Starship rocket on top of a super heavy booster in South Texas, beginning final preparations for a second launch attempt of the massive vehicle. Starship is indeed ready, but that's not all it takes to lift off the ground. The big, shiny red button is still in the hands of the government agency, the FAA. And not being provided a launch license can just simply tell us that there's not going to be any more Starship flights this year. So, should SpaceX exit Texas with Starship? Let's find out in today's episode of Great SpaceX. The Federal Communications Commission recently granted Elon Musk's SpaceX a license to conduct an experimental orbital demonstration and recovery test of its Starship rocket in the first quarter of 2024. The FCC application shows the orbital launch could take place anytime in a six-month period starting from January 27th of 2024 from SpaceX's testing facility in Boca Chica, Texas. January of 2024 marks exactly 135 days from now, which is the evaluation period by the Environmental Agency for the Starship program. If delays extend to this time frame, it would be quite problematic, resulting in an official nine-month postponement from the initial launch. One thing that makes Starship's schedule even more obscure is that the latest filing only seeks the FCC's authority to communicate with the Starship booster and the launch site. Depending on whether SpaceX has filed other applications with SpaceX, this could mean that the firm is either looking to run Starship tests that are not orbital, or it has filed other requests with the FCC to seek clearance for the full vehicle and flight. In short, Starship's upcoming journey appears to be fraught with challenges. With all this disappointment, I combed through a lot of your comments and we at Great SpaceX <clears throat> comments and we at Great SpaceX agree that SpaceX should go a few miles south of the border and adopt Mexico as a launch site, or perhaps focus entirely on the KSC in Florida, which is already wholly approved environmentally for launches. Better yet, they should build a launch rig like that of Sea Launch. In fact, as journalist Ileana Sheriff, Eliana Sheriff, who lives in Texas and is a very close watcher of all things SpaceX, shared, we need to understand there's a reason SpaceX tested and proved Falcon 1 from Kwajalein Atoll in the Marshall Islands in the North Pacific, measuring just six square miles and well out of the way before they could launch closer to home. It isn't Texas that's the problem. What we really need to focus on is the continued support and efforts working in tandem between the FAA, SpaceX, and the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service to keep a better launch cadence in Texas. It'd be nice to see a sense of urgency from all parties involved. In 2014, SpaceX chose Boca Chica to be Starbase, its next rocket development and testing facility. SpaceX rapidly developed the site, located just a few miles from the Rio Grande River, and began testing Starship prototypes. The orbital test launch explosion was not the company's first run-in with the FAA, which had previously said that a 2020 test of a prototype violated SpaceX's launch license for the mission. But the FAA approved the next test after investigating the launch and approving corrective steps taken by SpaceX. The FAA began an environmental review of Starship's orbital launch plan, and by June of 2020, the FAA released a Programmatic Environmental Assessment, or PEA, requiring SpaceX to take over 75 actions to mitigate the environmental impact, including on wetlands and wildlife and noise pollution. Just six days before the Starship test, the FAA granted Starship a five-year launch license, having determined that SpaceX had met all of its requirements. But the FAA did not conduct an environmental impact statement, which could have added years to the application, finding it unnecessary. Starship self-destructed a few minutes into its mission, a reminder that not even any nation or company as experienced as SpaceX avoids failure. In fact, CEO Elon Musk downplayed expectations by saying that the mission would be successful if it got off the pad. Given this context and Starship's iterative design process that accounts for failures, this test was rightly considered progress. The explosion rained debris across land and sea, affecting nearby towns and nature reserves and starting a fire in a state park. The rocket also blasted a crater into the launch pad that sent chunks of concrete, dust, and debris flying. There was no flame trench on the pad, which directs flames and exhaust away from the pad during launch. Musk said that SpaceX was taking steps to prevent damage during future launches. 
the FAA grounded Starship and launched an investigation, which could stretch many months. Environmental and cultural groups sued the FAA, claiming that the agency did not properly consider the environmental impact of Starship. The suit calls for the FAA to revoke the launch license. Weeks later, SpaceX sought to join the lawsuit as a defendant and warned that the suit could result in the program being significantly delayed. The FAA did conduct an extensive environmental assessment. The legal delays sought by the environmental groups and a full EIS itself are completely at odds with SpaceX's typical breakneck development and iteration speeds. Relocating to other existing launch sites like Cape Canaveral in Florida, Vandenberg in California, or Wallops in Virginia would likely require investment, development, environmental reviews, and licenses costing time and money. Anyway, there's no need for excessive concern, as Starship is critical to both civil and military U.S. leadership as well as presence in space. In the short term, NASA selected a variant of the Starship spacecraft as a lander to bring Artemis astronauts to the lunar surface needed for the Artemis 3 mission as soon as 2025. But the impact of a long-term license suspension or revocation would go far beyond a lander. Meanwhile, the Chinese space program has grown rapidly in recent decades. The PRC launched its first astronaut into space in 2003, along with building a space station called the Tiangong, which was completed last year. Longer-term plans include building a permanent settlement on the moon called the International Lunar Research Station, or the ILRS, which aims to build with Russia and other partner countries. While the ILRS aims to rival NASA's multilateral Artemis program, China is close closely watching Starship's development. It's even building its own next-generation super heavy lift rocket, the Long March 9. Starship development is still far ahead, but it's clear which rocket China is emulating, and it's not NASA's SLS. Initially, Long March 9 was expendable, but in November of 2022, designers switched to a version with a reusable first stage. Then, by March 2023, China announced it will be fully reusable. In other words, the result of the Starship Starship test has geopolitical implications as well. Without Starship, it's not unreasonable to think that China could have a reusable super heavy lift rocket capable of quickly delivering crew, cargo, and infrastructure to low Earth orbit and beyond, and not the United States. Only Starship could be revolutionary for humanity with the potential to win the race to Mars ahead of any government or other private sector player. And it's important to the United States for its cargo capacity, reusability, and rapid turnaround capabilities. The Starship test is certainly exceeding the expectations set by SpaceX, but the mid-air explosion has created a cloud of uncertainty over Starship's immediate future. There is a lot at stake over the next few months for SpaceX, for NASA, for South Texas, for Artemis Partners, and for China as the next Starship prototype is developed and investigations continue. Policymakers should be closely watching the FAA investigation into the test mission and legal action against the agency. U.S. national security interests will be harmed by an investigation and litigation that stretch out over many years. The FAA had already investigated and cleared Starship initially, and it's not in SpaceX's interest to have its launch complex cratered and incinerated every test. Therefore, it's critical that the size are able to reach a resolution that addresses the environmental damage and remediation from the test, engage the local community, and allow for a resumption of testing later this year. And that's all, folks. Thank you so much for watching, and if you want to support our channel and get access to exclusive content, please consider becoming a patron by clicking the link in the description below. We appreciate your generosity and your passion for space exploration. As always, this is Kevin from Great SpaceX, and until next time, keep looking up.